Welcome to video 6 for this unit on quadratic equations. In this video, we're going to focus on vertex form. Remember that a quadratic function can be defined by equivalent equations in different forms, which enable us to see different features of its graph. Here is a graph of a function. Let's look at three equivalent ways to define this function. From factored form, we can tell that the x-intercepts are 3, 0, and 7, 0. From standard form, we can tell that the y-intercept is 0, 21. From vertex form, we can tell that the vertex is 5, negative 4. A function expressed in vertex form is written as a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. The vertex of the function is h comma k. If we have an expression in standard form, we can rewrite it in vertex form by completing the square. Let's rewrite x squared plus 10x plus 24 in vertex form. A perfect square would be x squared plus 10x plus 25, so we need to add 1. Adding 1, however, would change the expression. To keep the new expression equivalent to the original one, we will need to add 1 and subtract 1. When written in this form, we can see that the vertex of the graph representing x squared plus 10x plus 24 is negative 5 comma negative 1. Any quadratic function has either a maximum or a minimum value. We can tell whether a quadratic function has a maximum or a minimum by observing the vertex of its graph. Here are graphs for f of x equals negative the quantity x plus 5 squared plus 4, and for g of x equals x squared plus 6x minus 1. The vertex of the graph of f is negative 5 comma 4, and the graph is a u-shape that opens downward. No other points on the graph of f are higher than negative 5 comma 4. So we can say that f has a maximum of 4, and that this occurs when x is negative 5. The vertex of the graph of g is at negative 3, comma, negative 10, and the graph is a u-shape that opens upward. No other points on the graph are lower than negative 3, comma, negative 10. So we can say that g has a minimum of negative 10, and that this occurs when x is negative 3. How can we know without graphing whether the vertex of the graph is its minimum or its maximum? The vertex form can give us that information as well. Let's look more closely at function g. To see if the vertex negative 3 comma negative 10 is a maximum or a minimum of g, we can rewrite x squared plus 6x minus 1 into vertex form. So g of x equals the quantity x plus 3 squared minus 10. When x equals negative 3, x plus 3 equals 0. So the quantity x plus 3 squared is 0. When x is not negative 3, then x plus 3 is a non-zero number. So the quantity x plus 3 squared is a positive number. Since a squared number cannot have a value less than 0, the function has its smallest value when x is negative 3. This means g has a minimum when x is negative 3. Let's look at function f to see if the vertex negative 5 comma 4 is a maximum or a minimum. We know that 
When x is negative 5, x plus 5 equals 0. So the quantity x plus 5 squared is 0. And when x is not negative 5, then the quantity x plus 5 squared is positive. The expression negative the quantity x plus 5 squared has a coefficient of negative 1. Multiplying a positive number by a negative number results in a negative. So negative the quantity x plus 5 squared will be negative when x is not negative 5. Since a negative number will always be less than 0, the value of f when x is not negative 5 will always be less than when x is negative 5. This means f has a maximum when x is negative 5. Thank you for watching video 6 of 6 for this unit on quadratic equations.